Hey everybody, Melissa here. So I was asked in a comment how to create an annual dynamic calendar in Microsoft Excel. Now what they mean by dynamic is when you select a year from a dropdown, the calendar automatically updates to reflect that year. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. I cannot wait to show you how this works, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is display today's date across the top of our annual calendar. And we have a function to help us with that. In cell A1, we want to do equals today, open and close our parentheses, and hit enter. And that displays today's date, 11-14-2022. Now I want to go ahead and center it across our annual calendar. So I'm going to select A1 to G1, merge and center, make the font just a little bit bigger, maybe bold it and put a fill behind it. Now instead of it being in this format, I want to change it to where it says today and puts a colon and then says Monday, November 14th, 2022. Now we're going to format the cells to do that. We can right click and go to format cells here. We can go to format cells here or we can do control N1. Now if you choose to do control one, make sure that you are using the one above your letters and not the one on your 10 keypad because that one will not work. So once we have format cells open, we wanna go to custom and we're gonna to go to type and we're gonna take this out. Now we wanna put in today and we're gonna put it and the colon in quotes. And if you notice in our sample, it's showing us what's going to be displayed. We're going to put a space, and now we're going to look at the day, and we're going to use four Ds. If we do one D, it shows the 14th, two shows the 14th. Then when we do the third one, it starts spelling out the day of the week. We're going to do one more because I want it to say Monday. We're going to do a space and a hyphen, and then we're going to look at the month. If we put in one M, it shows 11, 11. It abbreviates November with the third, and the fourth spells out November, which is how I want it. We're going to put the date, which is two Ds, November 14th, and then we're going to put four Ys for the year. So now it should display today, Monday, November 14th, 2022, and tell it OK. And there we have it. Now the next thing I want to go ahead and do is I want to change the width of my columns so that whatever we put down here has enough room. So I'm just going to select column A through column G, right click, column width, and I'm going to do 15.00 and tell it OK. And that gives us enough room for what we're going to be doing. Next, we're going to put a header for our year. So I'm going to skip a row, row 2, and go to row 3. In cell C3, I'm going to put 2022. And then I'm going to merge C, D, and E. Merge and center, make it a little bit bigger, bold it, and maybe put a different color, maybe a light green background on it. And instead of 2022, I want this to say year. So we can do the same thing and format our cells. So I'm going to go ahead and do Control 1, go to Custom, but this time we're going to leave this general, and as you see it says 2022. And we're going to put year in quotes before this general. And if you notice, it says year 2022. And let's go ahead and tell it OK. And there it's displayed. Now we're going to put the headers for the days of the week. So starting in A4, I'm going to do Sunday. And then I'll be able to make sure I have the plus sign, pull it across, and it'll put Sunday through Saturday. I'm going to go ahead and center them and maybe bold them, and that's all I want to do there for right now. Now we want to add a drop-down that lists our years that we want to be able to access. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to rename this sheet to Calendar, and I'm going to add a new sheet, and I'm going to call it Lists. And I'm going to name A1 Year, and then we're going to add our years. Now you may want to add some previous years depending on how far you want to go back and then some future years. 
So I'm going to start this one maybe around 2015 and take it through 2040. So I'm going to put 2015 and then if we go to the bottom right till we get our plus, hold down control, you can see 29, 30, 31, and we'll go to 2040 and then it's going to give us all of our years. Now we want to make this list a table and to do that we're going to make sure that we're on year. We're going to do control T and it's going to default to our list and yes we do have a header called year and we're going to tell it OK. And now we have our table. Now we can go back to our calendar and use it there. Now to add our list of years as a drop down we're going to go up to data. We're going to go over to data validation and in allow we're going to say a list. Make sure our cursor is in source. Go over to our list and we're going to select the whole column. Now we could just select what's in this table but let me explain why we want to use the whole column. If we go ahead and tell this OK we have our drop down and we have 2015 through 2040. Now let's just say that we want to add more years. If we go to list and let's just say we want to add five more years. Get our plus, control, go to 2045. We let go, come back. 2045 is displayed. So whenever you make that a table it's really easy when you want to either add or remove data it automatically updates wherever you're referencing it from. Now it's time to find all of our dates. And to help us do that we're going to use our date function. So in cell A5 we're going to do equals date, open our parentheses, what year are we looking for? Whatever year we select here. So C3, comma, what month are we looking for? January, the first month of the year. So we're going to put a 1 for January. What day are we looking for? The first day of January. Put another 1, close our parentheses, and hit enter. And that gives us January 1st of 2022. So if we wanted to do this manually just to see what it looks like, we could go to Monday, do equals A5 plus 1, and that's going to give us January 2nd. If we pull it, it's going to give us Saturday the 7th, so the 1st through the 7th. Now this is great, but there's one problem. January 1st of 2022 didn't fall on a Sunday. It fell on a Saturday. Now there's a quick way to find out what day of the week the 1st fell on. Go to any empty cell and do equals text, open parentheses, do whatever date you were looking for, which is January the 1st, comma, and put in quotes four Ds, and hit enter. And it's going to tell you that 1, 1 or January 1st fell on a Saturday in 2022. If we go to 2021, it fell on a Friday. So now that we know for sure this fell on a Saturday, we need to tell Excel we're not figuring that out manually. We need you to figure that out automatically for us. So let's go ahead and get rid of this field because we don't need it. And let's go back to A5. And what we're going to do is build on this function we already have here. So go ahead and hit F2. We're going to use the weekday function. And what that's going to do is tell Excel that no matter what year we pick, find where January the 1st fell. Because if it finds where January the 1st fell, that defines where all the other days fall within our calendar year. So what we're going to do is do a minus weekday, open our parentheses, and our serial number is our date function. It is our year and we're looking for January the 1st. So I'm just going to cheat and copy this so I don't have a typo. Put it within these parentheses. Now our return type. What kind of week are we using? Are we using Sunday through Saturday, Monday through Sunday, Wednesday through Tuesday? Well, we're using Sunday through Saturday. So I'm just going ahead and choosing this first one and we're going to double click. And we're going to close our parentheses and hit enter. Now if you notice it went from 1225 to 1231. That's great, right? Well, not really. If you remember when we did this up here with our text function, the first of the year fell on Saturday. 
So what we need to do, it's an easy fix, is go back to our function, hit F2, and at the very end of this, add a plus one. Now we've got 1226, and we have January the 1st of 2022 on the correct day. Now we're going to find the rest of the year, the 52 weeks, the 365 days. Now let's go ahead and take out Monday through Saturday because we don't need that and we're going to keep Sunday. Now we're going to build again on this same function. Now don't worry, I know this is really complicated, but I will put this entire function in its entirety and broke down in the description for you. So let's go ahead and hit F2. And now we're going to use the sequence function. And what it's going to do is it's going to return a sequence of numbers. In this case, our 365 days worth of dates. So what we're going to do is add the sequence function to the very beginning. So go ahead and type in sequence. Open your parentheses. Now our rows. How many rows do we need? Well, there's 52 weeks in a year. So your first thought would be, oh, we need 52, right? No. And here's why. If you've ever seen a calendar, there are some years, the way that the days within the month fall, it'll kick over to a 53rd week. That doesn't mean there's 53 weeks in a year. That just means there is a spillover of a few days. So the number of rows is going to be 53. How many columns? Well, there's always seven days in a week. So that's going to be seven and a comma. Now we're going to go to the very end, past our plus one, do another comma, and what is our step? Now our step is, how many numbers do you want me to skip? Like, am I giving you every other number, every third number, every fourth number? Well, in this case, we want every single day. So it's today, tomorrow, the next day. So we are incrementing or stepping by one. So make that a one, close your parentheses and hit enter. So we have our dates across the top with January the 1st starting on Saturday. Now if you notice the rest of these are numbers. So this is something neat about Excel. It doesn't store dates as dates. It stores them as numbers. That's what allows it to do very quick calculations and know where things are very quickly is because it stores them like this. But what we want to do now is we want to get these numbers back into date format. And how we're going to do that is on cell A5, we're going to select everything. We're going to do Control Shift right arrow, Control Shift down arrow, that selects everything. And we're going to format our cells. Now we can right click again and format, format from home here, but we're going to do Control 1 again. And we could do a standard date, but I'm going to do something a little different. So I'm going to go to custom and I'm going to take out general and I'm going to make my date format DD. See, it shows the 26th space hyphen space and I'm going to do MMM. So it's going to show my date as 26 hyphen December. Let's tell it OK. And it's changed all of my dates. Now, the first thing I'm going to do once this is done is I'm going to center them because that will drive me crazy at looking like that. Now, if you notice some of the previous year, December from 2021 has spilled over into our current calendar. Now, nothing at the end did. It went to December 31st. But if we go back a year, then we have some of December here and we have some of January here. And that's OK. We'll deal with that a little bit later. Now this looks great, right? It's awesome. All of our days of the year are here. But how do we know where each month starts? It's kind of confusing, right? You can't really tell. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do some conditional formatting to where we're going to tell Excel to make every other month a certain color. And how we're going to do that is we're going to go to A5, Control Shift right, Control Shift down, and we're going to go to conditional formatting and we're going to create a new rule. And we're going to do use a formula to determine which cells to format. And in our format values where this formula is true, we're going to use a function called is odd. So we're going to do equals is odd. And why are we using is odd? 
the first day of the month is always a one, and that one is always odd. So that's what it's telling it to look for. We're going to go back up and we're going to input month, put another parentheses, and we're going to choose cell A5. And we're going to hit F4 three times to make this not an absolute cell reference because we want it to search the entire calendar for that one, not just this cell here. And then we're going to close both sets of parentheses. And now we're going to tell it how to format it. Let's go to Format. Let's go to Fill. And let's just say we make this, I don't know, a green. Tell it OK. This is what it's going to look like. And tell it OK. If you notice, January's green, February is not, March is green, and so on. Now you can leave these white, or you can go in, select everything, go to Conditional Formatting, New Rule, use a formula, and you can do the opposite. Equals is even. Open your parentheses, month, open your parentheses, A5. F4 three times to make it not absolute. Close both of your parentheses. Format. Let's make this like another light yellow. Tell it OK. OK. And there is green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow. So it makes it a little bit easier to tell where your months stop and start. But let's take it a step further and make the first day of each month stand out. So we can go back to A5, Control shift right Control shift down Conditional Formatting, New Rule, Use a Formula, and we're going to use an AND formula. So we're going to do equals AND, open our parentheses, Year, open parentheses, A5, again F4, three times to make sure it's not an absolute cell reference, close that one, equals, our year, keep it an absolute cell reference because in this case, we only want it to look for the year in C3 and C3 only. We're going to do a comma, do a day, open parentheses, A5 again, and our F4 three times, close parentheses, equals one, close the parentheses again. Okay, you're like, what is that? <laughs> so I'm going to put this down in the description as well. Basically, what this is saying is Excel, I want you to look in the year that is selected here, whether it's 2021, 22, 24, 2015, and I want you to find the first of each month, and I want you to do what I tell you to do here. So let's go ahead and click Format, and let's just say we want to put an outline border, and we want it to be red. We want to change our font to red, and is that all we want to do? Let's just say that's all we want to do for now. Tell it OK, tell it OK, and look, the first of each month has a box around it, and it's red. Now I want to format what day of the year today is. So I'm going to select everything, Control shift right Control shift down Conditional Formatting, New Rule, Use a Formula, and we're going to do equals A5, and we're going to F4 to take the absolute cell reference out, equals today's date, which is A1, and we're leaving it an absolute cell reference, and we're going to tell it to format, and let's just say we want to fill it with purple, and we want to make the font white, and we want to bold it. Tell it OK. Tell it OK. And look here, November the 14th. Tomorrow this will look like this, and so on. So that looks great, right? It's working the way that we want it to. Now these here are kind of confusing, or any that would be at the end for next year. So we want to do something with these a little bit different. Now we have two options. We can format them. So let's go ahead. And control shift right, control shift down, and we can go to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, and in our format, we can put in equals year and put in our A5, F4, so it's not an absolute, close our parentheses, not equal to, 
That's what these mean here, not equal to. C3 or the current year that we've selected and format it. So basically what this is doing is telling Excel, look for any dates that aren't in this year and do this to them to where the only ones we're going to really see are these. So let's go to Format. And let's just say with these, we want to fill it light blue. I don't know why I would do that, but let's just go with that. And we want to make the font a light gray. Tell it OK. This is what it's going to look like. And then it's going to take the ones that aren't in the current year and do that. Let's do this and let's pick 20. 32, it changed it, and then the ones at the beginning or the end are formatted like that. Now the other thing we can do is select everything, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula. We can do equals our year, A5, F4 three times to take out our absolute cell reference, close our parentheses, not equal to our year, and then we can go to format, Go to Number, go to Custom, take General out, put a quote space quote, tell it OK, tell it OK, and it takes it out completely. But here's the deal. See how this is goad? We don't want this to be goad. So if we go to our conditional formatting, we go to Manage Rules, and we find this one here, tell it to stop if true, tell it to apply, and OK and it made it white and took the dates completely out. So if we go to say year 2025, we're gonna have some at the beginning and some at the end. But as you can see, you have a full calendar for the whole year. You can tell when dates start and when they stop. So I'm gonna do a couple of final formatting changes. I'm gonna highlight my days of the week and maybe put a fill in there to kind of give it some separation between the year and the calendar. And then I'm going to select everything and maybe put a border, a thick outside border, and then maybe all borders on the inside. And then maybe go up to view and turn off my grid lines to kind of make it look like just a regular calendar. Now when we go in and we select a year, it dynamically changes based on the year that we've requested. And that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Drop me a comment if you have any questions, feedback, or ideas for future tutorials. And be sure to click that subscribe button before you leave. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.